So hello everybody, it is Power Week, which means that the Power BI team has released a new Power BI desktop update. This time it is April 2020, and I know it is May, but they wanted to wait for the Business Application Summit to release all this stuff. Okay, so I'm going to do a feature summary, which means that we're going to go through the features that you need to know. I will go through two of the features in a little bit more detail and a third I will do a separate video. I also have two features that they have not been announced on the blog but they are live in Power BI so you don't want to miss that. Let's get started. Okay the first feature I want to talk about is the lasso select before you could if you wanted to select visuals you have to do it one by one or you could do control A and select all of them and delete. Now you can actually control click to select. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so you can control or shift click and then you can select multiple visuals. And if you then use control G, you can group the visuals that you selected and shift control G, you can um, ungroup, which that is very, very useful to be able to group and group things faster. So feature number two, it is conditional formatting for totals and subtotals. This has been requested for a long, long, long time and it is finally here. So that is great news. Now I want to have conditional formatting on line charts, please. Feature number three. Okay, feature number three is uh, the discoverability of conditional formatting. Before, to do conditional formatting, you have to hover over and see there was a three dots hidden somewhere. Not anymore. They have a huge FX button now. Great, great improvement for usability of Power BI Desktop. Very well done. The next one that is not on the blog either, I haven't seen it anyway, it is that now in Power Query, if you create a comment on one of the steps, an I will appear on the query step pane, basically. So you can see which query steps have comments. Great update. And it's available in Excel too. I think it was available in Excel first, to be honest. And now they put it in Power Query, in Power BI. Great, great, great update. Now, let me talk about two other updates with a little bit more detail. The first one is change visuals. You can actually have your users change the visuals that you publish on Power BI services, work only on the service. So you create a report and then they say, oh, I want to have a pie chart in here. Who doesn't want to have a pie chart, right? So they will can change all your visuals into power charts if they so like it, okay? Now, there are a few catches here. Number one is a preview feature. You have to set a preview in Power BI Desktop. Number two, you have to set, allow it for each report on Power BI Desktop. So you have to say, in this report, I do want to allow uh, users to be able to change the visuals. And not only that, you can actually change it by visual too. So you can say, I just want you to change this to pie chart. Everything else should stay as is. So I think it is great that they gave such low granularity on where you can do this. For a standard report, if you are paying somebody to do reports for you, pretty stressed that they are doing a good job and don't allow to change for other reports, it is optional, okay? So I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, but go ahead, the option is here. So the second feature I want to talk about a little bit more in detail is the automatic page refresh. I have two videos on that already, but the automatic page refresh basically allows you to have more granularity. For example, when you have, this works only with direct queries. So if you have, if you're measuring the performance of a machine, you're probably going to do that by the minute so, or by the second. So you will be able to have automatic page refresh on direct queries that you already have that for a few months ago. And now what they are introducing with that feature is the change detect detection. So before you had to, with the performance analyzer, you can see, okay, how long does it take for this report to refresh? Two seconds, so I want you to automatically page refresh every two seconds, otherwise you wouldn't make any sense. But now you can actually set it so it will detect changes and uh, 
Here are some things that you need to know first. There's a, it is a preview feature, you have to take it on. Uh, you can have one change detection per model. So you can say with this, for example, you can set a, a last date. If the last date changes, then you know, change it. Or if the number of rows changes, just do a page refresh. Um, if you activate that, it won't work page, automatic page refresh won't work on the desktop, it will only work on the service. And it is a premium feature, so you have to have premium enabled, and you have to enable it on the admin panel in the service too. So you have to enable it in the desktop, and you have to enable it in the service, and it will stop working on the desktop. With that said, you will find the settings on the formatting pane where the automatic page refresh settings are, which is good. And uh, you basically specify how frequently a field that you chosen, how frequently they change if something has changed, like the number of rows or the last date or things like that, okay? And together with that, they say, okay, hey, now we have something that changes every minute, but my visual has a granularity of days. So I'm not seeing anything anyway. So they have introduced a new filter, they call it relative time filter, that you can actually have it to show only a minute or a second of the visual that you have, like a line chart or whatever. So it is very, very useful. You don't have to use it only for automatic page refresh, but they have done it with that in mind, just so you know. Okay, so that is a great uh, thing to know. Now, uh, data lake storage, I heard or I was told that, you know, that I had a problem with the data lake storage that I deleted, the one that I had connected to Power BI. I was told that this was going to be fixed. I, could, I cannot change it anymore. It's still not fixed. They have made the small change, but that's not included. I thought that you should know post here a link to that video so you don't make the same mistake. And the feature that I'm going to do a separate video as soon as I have time is a deep dive on the query diagnostics. They have made an improvement so you have a little bit more granularity of how the query diagnostics steps work. So I will do a deep dive, I really owe that. So I, I, I will do a deep dive um, very, very soon.